The beaches have been part of my life since the very beginning. It is part of our identity we live in this peninsula. I remember riding my first wave on my inflatable raft. It's part of who we are. I want to go in the ocean. I know. Well, the question would be, what would Florida be without its beaches? It, it wouldn't be the same place. It wouldn't be a place that a lot of people would want to go to. There's an enormous amount of wealth that is tied to the use of the beach. So if we lose those, we're losing one of the primary economic drivers of the state of Florida, and also losing um, what I would argue is one of the primary recreational assets that we have, and that recreational asset translates into human well-being. As the sea encroaches, people tend to want to put up defenses. Those defenses are seawalls. When seawalls are built, then uh, you end up losing the sand bank that provides the beach for the next generation. Um, so ultimately, the beach will shrink and it'll become increasingly difficult to laterally access the beach. By laterally access, I mean to walk up and down the beach. Sea turtles and people both need beach access. That's the bottom line on that. had a lot of overwash with those last nests that used to be above the high tide line are now being overwashed, so. Still yeah. optimistic? I have to be optimistic, <laughs> right? We right. have to be optimistic, for yeah. sure. Especially since this is one of the yeah. better yeah. parts of beach we have, I guess, with the dunes trying to grow back. Definitely. No seawall, so we'll see. But it's kind of like the, the coastal squeeze concept. You're kind of getting these limited pocket beaches. Now, how important are these little pocket beaches going to be for the nesting turtles that you see on your beach here? Right. What kind of a natural beach are we going to have? How far are these seawalls going to go? What we're looking at here is pretty much a situation where we've got uh, a seawall section to the south of us, a seawall section to the north of us. Uh, because of regulation, there's a gap closure regulation that allows for the permitting of the closure of these two seawalls. So essentially going to be connecting the dots of that seawall to this seawall. It's a domino effect. So as walls go in, it starts to be that the house to your south sees that erosion factor from the northern currents that are coming through. So it starts to be that once a seawall goes in, it's a matter of how much it starts to spread down the coastline. Already in Florida, there are many places where beaches are private and you can't get on them. But once you start building seawalls, you're not only losing access to the beach, you're also losing the ability to walk down the beach. Simply because there's no beach left, there's no longer any room to put down a towel and recreate on Florida's beaches. This is what we need to avoid at all costs in Florida. At some point in time, if the beach erodes enough, you're going to end up with a mean high tide line and a mean low tide line that are just two marks on a seawall. And when that happens, it's impossible for people to move laterally along the beach. They're going to have to either trespass or not use the beach. That's the threat that continuing sea level rise and continuing erosion pose.